Okay, so uh, what this video is going to be about is uh, going through and just um, giving you an example of how to create a watershed in ArcGIS Pro using the watershed tools in Toolbox. Um, so what I have here is uh, a uh, ArcGIS Pro session with the world imagery uh, loaded in. Um, and I also have a DEM, which uh, is the Stinking Water DEM, with, uh, about 50 miles west of Casper. And underneath that, I just created a hillshade um, for it. We, we don't use the hillshade for anything. Remember what a hillshade is, is it just shows where the hills and valleys are uh, from a DEM. Um, this is just for looks mainly to have the hill shade underneath the DEM. Uh, but really what we're after here is just to show how to create watersheds uh, using GIS. And it all starts with a DEM, a digital elevation model, which I have uh, loaded in here. Uh, so the first thing you need to do to create a watershed is you need to create um, uh, the flow direction model. So to do that I'm going to go up to analysis, I'm going to go into tools, and I'm going to type in flow direction. And here's the flow direction tool. Pretty straightforward here, we're going to input the surface raster, which is the stinking water DEM. We're going to tell it where to save this new data. Um, and I'm just going to save it. Uh, for you, you're going to want to save it in your watershed folder. I'm just going to save it in my Project 4 uh, folder that I have going on. And I'm going to call it um, flow underscore DIR for flow direction. And I'm going to run the tool. And what's it's going to create here is it's this is the, what's called the D8 flow model. Again, that's D8, and what that means is direct eight directions. Um, you can see here that there's eight cardinal directions: one, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, and one twenty-eight. And what those stand for is the direction that water is flowing in each particular ten-meter cell in the DEM. And I can't remember what direction is what, but I think one is north, two is east, uh, four is south, eight is west, northeast, northwest, southwest, southeast, uh, and so on. So there's eight directions that water can flow. And that's what this uh, is modeling right here. So the eight cardinal directions that water can flow out of a cell. Um, once you have the flow direction created, the next thing we need to do is look for flow accumulation. So input the flow direction raster, that's flow underscore dir, what we just created a few minutes ago. The output Again, I'm going to call it flow underscore ACC for accumulation. And we're going to click run and run the tool. And so what we have now is, um, this is what flow accumulation is, is the number of cells that flow into each other. So somewhere in this cell, in the white area, there are 69,354 other cells that flow into it, and I'm guessing that is probably this cell up here. Which makes sense since this is Casper Creek right here. This is the main tributary going through this DEM. So again, there are 69,354 other cells flowing into the end of it right here. We want to sort of pick out some other cells in here 
Um, and what we want to do, and I'm just kind of arbitrarily making this number up, you could make any number up you wanted, uh, but I want to pick out all the cells that have a hundred or more cells flowing into them. So this would be sort of a hundred count stream network that we're going to make. Okay. And to do that, we need to reclassify the cells. Okay, so in my tools, I'm going to look for the reclassify tool. Okay, we want reclassify spatial analyst. And our input raster is going to be the accumulation. And then we're going to click the classify button. And there's going to be two classes because we want all the cells that have a hundred or more cells flowing into them. So 0 to 100, and then 101 to the highest cell, which is the 69,354. And so any cell that has less than 100, we want to give a 0. And any cell that has 100, 101 or more, so actually what we want to do is we want to make this 99 and this. hundred and all of the cells that have a hundred or more flowing into them we want to give a one okay and we're going to call that call this flow accumulation underscore RC because we reclassified it okay so you can see here we have a little more recognizable stream network again all the cells that are green that are attributed with a zero have 99 cells or less flowing into them. All the ones that are purple attributed with a one, they have a hundred or more cells flowing into them. So again, you can say this was a hundred, a hundred count uh, stream network. Okay. Uh, remember, this is just this is a raster. This stream network is made up of cells. Uh, for us to create a watershed, we need this stream network to be in a line. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to convert. We want to go from raster to polyline. Okay. Raster to polyline. So our input raster is going to be the reclassified accumulation data. We want to tell it where to save this. Okay, so we're just going to call this streams 100. And we're going to click run. Okay, now you can see here we have a stream network. I'm going to actually go ahead and uh, color this blue okay I'm going to turn off the direction and accumulation data and there you can see we have our stream network that is now a line instead of a raster. Okay. Um, okay. Next thing, we need a pore point. Um, so, and remember, the pore point is where the watershed starts from. Okay. So. I'm going to go ahead into my Project 4 folder, and I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to say New. Um, actually, right-click New. trying to do is create a shapefile here. Actually what I may need to be, I need to do it in the geodatabase, so um, I'm going to right click new and we're going to create a new feature class 
and we're going to call it, I'm going to call it pour point one, and it's going to be a point, and I'm going to click next, and I'm going to click finish, And here's that data right here, and I'm going to just drag it over here and add it to my map. Okay. Then I need to add a pour point in, so I'm going to go up to the top where it says edit here. Uh, and bear with me here. Okay, we need to hit the create button. I'm going to highlight pour point. And I'm going to make the watershed for Stinking Water Creek. So I'm going to put that pour point right there. Okay. And I'm going to close the Create Features window. I'm going to make this point a little bigger, maybe a different color. Okay. Yep, there's my four point. Okay, final step is let's go ahead and create the watershed. Um, let's go to analysis tools, type in watershed, pull up the watershed tool. So input the D8 flow direction raster, that's flow DIR, input raster or feature pour point, that's pour point one. And what do we want to name this? We'll just go ahead and call it Watershed. Okay. Click Run. Okay, so I'm glad this happened. Sometimes uh, when you place your pour point, you need to kind of move this pour point up and down. So let's go ahead and uh, edit the pour point. Okay, I move my pour point, and let's go ahead and rerun uh, the watershed tool. So again, flow direction, pour point one. And it did it again, so we need to move this thing. We need to move this point again, it looks like. So I'm going to select this pour point. And I'm going to move it. And let's rerun the watershed tool again.
Okay. Okay, third time's a charm. Let's go ahead and rerun the watershed tool. So direction 4.1. Going to resave it as watershed. Not sure why it didn't work that time. Okay, so uh, we created the pour point. Let me make this symbol a little bigger just so we can see it. And here's our watershed. So what this watershed is doing is it's encompassing all of the area, uh, all of the water that flows out of this area. So all the water that that lands in this black area right here comes out eventually to this point. It doesn't go anywhere else except to this point. Um, now this is a raster model so probably the last thing we want to do is we want to convert, we want to go raster to polygon. So our input raster is going to be the watershed tell it um, where to save this and we'll just call this watershed okay now we can remove the raster watershed and then we can turn the polygon watershed um, to an outline so that we can see the area on the other side of it. Okay, so those are uh, the steps again of how to use ArcGIS Pro to create, um, to automate the process of creating a watershed. Now notice uh, the line or the watershed just sort of stops here and makes a straight line. That's because that is where the DEM ends is right here and right here. Obviously that's not natural. If we wanted to continue this on to where the water should actually go, we would need to download the DEM for this area and for this area here. Uh, but you can, you can get the point there. So, um, okay, I hope that makes sense. Again, contact me if, if you have any questions about this. Thanks.